Okay, welcome back. Now, if you look at the headlines at Rents, you'll find a number of stories that are very important. They're they're certainly germane to this uh, next guest and what we're going to be talking about. Uh, they have to do with mind manipulation. I won't say mind control, but mind manipulation. There is now technology admitted that can take software and create, and you'll find the story in headlines. I want you to look for this and, and, and look at the uh, YouTube video. It'll take any idea, a suggestion of a human physiognomy, that's a face, and create a full 120% believable human face in living color that doesn't exist. When you look at the video, every single face you see in that video was created by software. They all look like different people, every single one of them, every one of them. So they can create people that don't exist, that look totally, they're 2D, but they look 3D, all right, they look real. They can have them talk, they can have them walk, they can have them act in sitcoms, they can do anything. These people don't exist. And then there's another story there. They, the Chinese, are creating what they call Photoshop for the human voice. Need I say much more? In other words, we are in the digital age of utter science fiction. We can see things, watch people, listen to people that don't exist, never existed, and never will exist. We're now to the point where if we really aren't physically in proximity to something that we can reach out and almost touch it, we don't know if it's real. Anything on the screen, I don't care if it's an iPad or a smartphone or a desktop, it doesn't matter. If it's on a screen with CGI, you don't know if it's real. And now with this new technology, you won't know if the people are real. All right? And it looks, I'm not talking about something that looks like a cyborg come to life. I'm talking about real people. If the story's in headlines. I want you to go look for that. And then also the story about photoshopping the human voice. They can have anybody's voice say anything they want, and you'll never know. So, literally, we are now, from conception to the grave, going to be exposed to living in a digital world that doesn't exist. I want you to think about that. I'm not exaggerating any of it. Now, our guest, these next two hours, is an extraordinarily brilliant and well-informed, self-taught, which is often the best education you can get. You're hungry, you go looking, you learn. You don't stop. His name is Brian Tu, T-E-W. And he has knowledge about mind control, mind manipulation, social and cultural engineering on a mass scale. And we're going to go beyond 5G. 5G is bad. But there's even worse technology that is being unleashed and deployed on all of us. Uh, it is a world now... Uh, if you're screen-oriented, and we all are, remember what I said, what you see and what you hear from CGI to these two new technologies that I've got in headlines today, it can all be utter electronic noise. No more. That's it. Just electronics. doesn't exist. Brian, are you there? I am, Jeff. How are you? I'm. Uh, it's been a long day today. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> How, how is the sound quality? Am I coming through clearly? You sound fine. Real, real good. No um, buzz, no hum. I, you're, you're clean. I appreciate you having me on. I, uh, when, I was, when I was working with, as a contractor for the U.S. Department of Defense and FEMA, the Federal Emergency Management Agency, I was actually targeted with this technology but had no idea. Right. Did not understand anything about biocommunications technology. In my first year of law school at the University of Liverpool is when I first noticed that I was being, you know, targeted. But that at that time, I still had no understanding of, of this biocommunications technology, synthetic uh -huh. telepathy, B2K, uh -huh. et cetera. Uh -huh. yeah. um, like you know, many people who are targeted, I had to put, you know, I had to connect the dots. <laughs> it took a while. Um, but uh, I do like to talk about this technology. It's been around for quite a while. And mind control technologies have been around for thousands of years. Uh, education is a form of mind control. Of course it is. how to think. You bet. Yeah. Organized religion is the most, you know, 
great, probably the greatest mind control instrument ever created by what man. A, what an engine of death. Yeah, you got it. And suffering been, yeah. and pedophilia and corruption and criminality and satanic Luciferian worship behind the scenes. And so, you know, various forms of this technology has existed in various forms, for, you know, for thousands, for millennia. It goes back, we can trace it all the way back to the Egyptian Book of the Dead. But mind control technologies today, uh, which, you know, basically depend on two things, uh, uh, electromagnetic energy, electromagnetic low frequency waves interfacing with nanotechnology, right. has been around roughly since the 1960s. Um, and so, you know, we don't know exactly what form it started with, how it evolved and modified to what they have now. But today, mind control technologies today, it's, this, is, this, is, this is a weapon system. You know, this is not for the betterment of humanity uh, to turn America and the industrialized nations of the world into a neuro society where people can communicate with each other and, and with computers via their brainwaves. Right. You know, that will be the cover story. Oh, they're going to sell that, uh, Brian. Uh, excuse me, but you're right. They're going to sell this so easily to people. It's a joke. Not everybody, but the great majority. They'll sell it to them in, in f five seconds with the, the technology they have and the media dominance they have. Oh, no, it's not even a horse race. Go ahead. And the travesty is that the sheepish masses will accept it every um, time. You know it. Yeah, and uh, you know the greatest travesty in. in you know, American uh, civil rights history is happening right under our nose every day, and people don't even know it exists. Uh, and, and by the time they do, it will be too late. It's basically, it's two things, consists of two things. That they, they've, been, they've been, you know, involved in the training, research, and development of it to fully implement it. And the, and the government, who is first in the world to do so, to fully implement and, and, de and deploy this technology, will have an incomparable advantage over every other government on Earth. So basically what you have is an arms race. You have essentially the Americans and its allies on one side and the Russians and the Chinese and their allies on the other side. Um, uh, and basically, uh, you, you, this is a directed energy, a neuro warfare, Cold War 2.0, if you will. Um, and people, people don't even know that it exists. Uh, yeah, based on, you know, again, uh, a fabricated falsified stream of electromagnetic low frequency waves interfacing with the human mind. Uh, the brainwave patterns of their victims. So they've been spraying this nanotechnology. And, and, and if you have an outline you want to go out, you want to go on, just, just in, interrupt. No, no, just go. You're doing fine. Uh, spraying nanotechnology. All right. Can you spell chemtrails, ladies and gentlemen? Yes, you can. Spraying nanotech. All right. Did you get a chance to look at any of that uh, uh, Harold Vela's video today at all? I the, did. The I, German I guy. some of it. I didn't see all of it. Yeah. But guys, he, he's good. brilliant. Yeah, he's good. Yeah. He's got it. He, he knows all about nanotech. In good detail. Yeah. Yeah, nanotech, uh, and that includes, uh, friends, Morgellons, uh, under that umbrella. Uh, we've got chemtrails. We have the dispersion of things, machines, nanomachines, self-replicating machines that can be inhaled. You can drink it with water or you can eat it with food, and you're getting it all three ways. Believe it. And it's been going on for, what, since the mid-90s, I guess is when they started in earnest deploying this with planes, spraying it. Go ahead. Yeah, they've been, they've been spraying the nanotech and the biotech. We talked about this yesterday, into the hydrosphere for the last, we know, at least 25 years. The nanotechnology and the biotechnology filters down from the hydrosphere into the water supply and the food chain and now every every american all 318 million americans are are infected once the uh they're there you know excuse me again brian and i'll shut up they're not just infected they're infested and when you you people think about well i'm not going to get chipped you're already chipped it's way <laughs> down the road past that go ahead brian i'm sorry it, it is dr robert duncan who who I, I'm a student of his his, his writings, of his work. Uh, he said, you know, in, in an interview that he gave, it's just too late. It's too late to stop it. Um, because one reason is because you know, the technology has advanced so far and is so sophisticated now that there's no turning back. And secondly, you know, there are other reasons, but primarily everyone's already infected with a nanotechnology. We don't Once need chips. No way. No, this is not based on microchips. It never was. And in fact, they don't even need nanotech. But in a real-world environment, they do need what's called an amplifier, mm -hmm. a bioamplifier. And that's what the nanotechnology is. Once consumed in the water or the food, the nanotechnology migrates to the bloodstream, to the brain, and begins to adhere to 
the neurotransmitters of a victim's brain or the person's brain and then through a process called transcranial brain stimulation interfacing with streams of electromagnetic low frequency waves it begins to that nanotechnology begins to speak to and decode those neurotransmitters through a process called transcranial brain stimulation and that's how they're able to you know the supercomputers that are that are, that are doing most of the torture and assassination uh the cia and and DOD supercomputers, these exascale systems, that's how they're able to, to build a cognitive model of their victims' brains to, for, you know, to eventually mm-hmm. achieve direct behavioral control mm-hmm. over, the, over their victims. Right. So, uh, it's, you know, and, and if you, if, you know, for that reason alone, we can say we probably passed the point of no return. We passed the point of no return. Uh, there's another way to look at it. We, are, we have moved into a new epoch. Uh, of not only the human condition, but of human evolution and the potential for humanity to remain. That's now questionable. Uh, it, it was not questionable two or three generations ago to most people, but now it is. AI and what you're talking about, and you work for, you work for DOD and who else did you work for? I worked for ITT Industries in the Department of Defense. Uh-huh. Uh, and before and after that, I worked for FEMA, the Federal Emergency right, Management right, Agency. Right. I was a contractor with Parsons Brinkerhoff. Um, but, you know, I was just a low-level contractor, nobody really important. But at the time, targeted in, in Eastern Europe and throughout the Gulf region of America as I was deployed to those, to, deployed to those locations with this technology. Basically, what they've done is they've weaponized neuroscience. Uh, neuroscience is no longer just a field of medicine. It's, it's crossed the threshold of medical science, and it's now a chief weapons platform used by the intelligence, the major intelligence agencies of the world. You know, mind control technologies are based off three things. Neuroscience, psychology, and what is called satanic ritual abuse. And that's what they've done. They've, they've weaponized neuroscience. Right. Uh, and, you know, I guess probably we could start just by going over the basics of who, what, when, where, and why. Sure. Uh, mind sure. control technologies exist, and for what reason? And uh, is not course, uh, is not Brian is not SRA uh, at the bedrock of how they begin to build these these uh, mind controlled? What would you call them? I don't well, know. According to Dr. Robert Duncan and, and other scientists who were involved in the development of the technology, one of which I can't even name, uh, who, whom I got a great deal of research from, at the risk of his life, mm-hmm. a great uh, man. I, I'm, I can't even name him. But according to you know Dr. Robert Duncan and these other scientists who were involved in the technology, uh, there are basically four main organizations, agencies behind it all. Yes, there are, you know, agencies, organizations, per- personnel, a lot of people involved at the local, state, and federal level, obviously. But you know, Dr. Robert Duncan said in, in his book Project Soulcatcher that it could all be traced back to four main agencies or organizations who are behind it all, at least if you're American. Um, and those four organizations and agencies behind it all start with the Department of Defense, my former employer, who provides all the money, all the funding through their black ops budgets. Then it's the, the National Security Agency, which uh-huh. provides the top scientists. Right. But primarily, it's the CIA and the DIA, the Central Intelligence Agency and the Defense Intelligence Agency, which provides the, the contractors, the handlers, the operators, these hide mine teams. That, they're the ones that are basically responsible for the torture and assassination of mind control victims for the purposes of training, research, and development. It's, it's the CIA and DIA that, that's targeting and attacking people. Mm-hmm. And they're using contractors. These government contractors that they're using, these hive mind teams, are, are mainly cognitive researchers, people who have some degree of expertise in the area of the mind, particularly as it relates to memory and thought process. Mm-hmm. So you're talking about these hive mind teams, these, these government contractors, these cognitive researchers being psycho- psychiatrists, psychologists, neuroscientists, behavioral scientists, and so on. Mm-hmm. And they are, they are responsible for, mainly responsible for the training, research, and development behind all of this. And, you know, they operate in what are called um, hive mind teams. These hive mind teams are dedicated to the victim, the target. Now, not everyone is... is you know, it has hive mind teams that are dedicated to them. Most people are just tied, remotely tied to a supercomputer, and we'll, we'll, we'll get into that shortly. Now, you're talking about TIs. Some TIs have a hive mind team working them. That's what you're saying? Right. Okay. Well, as soon as a person is selected for this, for this technology, mm-hmm. all, the, all the, the, the empty or 
available apartments, homes, offices, hotel rooms, etc., in and around their Notice neighborhood. Notice, snapped right up. Yeah. Right. They're leased. They're subleased. Then the hive mind teams move in. The surveillance teams move in. The you know on and on down to the organized stalkers at the street level surround the victim and they keep the victim at that point in what's called a floating box. It's called a psychotronic concentration camp. The science behind mind control technologies is called psychophysics. The technology behind mind control technologies is called psychotronics. And say say that again, uh, Brian. That was important. Please, psychophysics and psychotronics. Go ahead. Psychophysics and psychotronics. The science is psychophysics. The technology is psychotronics. And they're keeping their victims basically boxed in, mm-hmm. in a floating box. Mm. And we'll get to that if we, in, in, shortly. But I wanted to just start off with, you know, um, how, how they're doing it and why. Basically, we know that the four agencies involved are the DOD, CIA, DIA, and, and then the, the NSA. Mm-hmm. Um, but those handlers and operators that are dedicated to the victim every eight hours, they work in shifts. Not all targeted individuals have hive mind teams. Mo- the majority don't have hive mind teams which are dedicated to them. But most trauma-based mind control victims do have hive mind teams dedicated to them. Uh, and they work in a you know an eight-hour shift with some degree of overlap. Uh, this is also referring to the, the the general term of gang stalking. Understand that this is what gang stalking is fueled by hive mind teams. Go ahead. Yeah, the high mind teams direct the paradigm against the, the target individual, the mind control victim for training, research, and development. They're the ones that, you know, control the surveillance teams below them, uh-huh. uh, on down to the organized stalkers at the street level. Um, they're hiding behind and using law enforcement agencies and other government agencies and organizations to do their dirty work, to achieve their objective. Basically, the high mind teams are using, they're using two interfaces, okay? They're using what's called a brain to computer interface and Secondly, they're using what's called an electronic brain-to-brain interface. The brain-to-computer interface is simply the supercomputer, okay? So what they do is they move close to the victim. The hive mind teams will, will move close to the victim. They will obtain remotely uh, a brainwave, the, brain, the digital brainwave signature of the victim, the digital brainwave imprint, similar to an EEG readout, and you would get at a hospital. They're mm-hmm. able to, remote, to obtain that remotely. And then once they have that digital brainwave imprint, that your that digital copy of your brainwave signature, it's like a fingerprint. They upload that. Like a fingerprint. Okay. Right. It's unique to every person, just like a set of fingerprints. Nobody mm-hmm. has the same brainwave mm-hmm. signature. Mm-hmm. Okay. They didn't take that digital brainwave imprint, that brainwave signature, and they upload it to their supercomputer, mm-hmm. and then they remotely tie. That's the key word to understand. They remotely tie the victim for life to that supercomputer wirelessly, remotely, by way of a bidirectional stream of electromagnetic low-frequency waves, specifically tuned to the brainwave signature of the victim. That stream contains a hidden carrier frequency. Uh, I, I should call it a bit stream. It contains data, okay? That hidden carrier frequency, that pulse train. The ELF, ELF, uh, ELF bit stream of, of data. Right. The, the bit stream they're using is specifically tuned to the brainwave signature of the victim so that they can interact with the brainwave pattern Got it. Uh, and manipulate the brainwaves of the victim. So, what Okay, c- question. To- may, I, may, I, may I jump in here? Of course. Go right we've, ahead. we've established that everybody has a brainwave frequency signature. That is, is uh, clocked. It's uploaded into the supercomputers. By the, ultimately, everybody will be in there, or most everybody. Can they right. not... Can they not use that, we'll call it a, an address, that electromagnetic signature frequency of the particular person, that brain, that's their address. Can they not generically through, let's say, 5G or 4G or the electric grid or ELF transmissions or satellites, they can just, kind of like a shotgun, put out their bitstream and that only that brain will actually receive it. Wherever that person, they don't have to have the person necessarily in a floating box. He could be in the next town over. They can generically put this stuff out, can they, uh, in a bit stream, and that, that mind will pick it up wherever it is. Well, correct. Obviously, you know, for, for training, research, and development, they have to verify their technology. So uh, of course, when of course. verification is absolutely yeah. necessary, they have to surround the victim. You but, can't move forward without verification. I got you. Right, but but uh, uh, this 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 stream, this bidirectional stream of energy, which they can upload, download at the speed of light, um, is called the information and injection feedback loop. 
Okay, so they can you know inject uh, at, at speed of light, and energy travels at speed of light. So by modulation of the phase, the frequency, and amplitude of that stream, they can begin to manipulate the brain waves of the victim. What's happening is they they're t- they remotely tie the victim using they're using to answer your question. They're specifically they're using three platforms. Five uh, G, um, to the best of my knowledge is not necessary or required uh, for, for mind control technologies to work properly. Now, there's a lot of infrastructure involved. I don't understand all that. I would refer you back to Dr. Robert Duncan and, uh, and the other scientists who are involved. Um, but this stream is, is an extremely low frequency, electromagnetic low frequency waves that are specifically tuned to the brainwave signature of the victim. So you're talking micrograms, okay? Sure. This would not be 5G. But the, the three platforms they're using to target their victims, people want to know how they're being targeted. You know, they think they're being targeted with towers and satellites. No, you're not. You're not being targeted. They say they're being attacked with towers and satellites. No, you are not. They are simply the relay devices. The, you're being attacked by a supercomputer. The supercomputer begins to monitor all electromagnetic activity of the victim's brain by way of this bidirectional stream of energy. Mm-hmm. And it begins to monitor and download all that, in, that information back into its database. So any set of brain waves can be captured, held, and perpetually replayed in the victim's brain. So what the system is doing is it's copying all the brain waves of the victim, and it's downloading them back into its system and building within the database. Wow. Wow. They they are actually... Yeah, they have a complete uh, 4D model of the brain and the psyche and everything else of the uh, the targeted individual. This is fascinating. We have to take a break, Brian. Hold on. Uh, At the rudimentary baseline of a lot of, uh, of people that end up uh, in this awful matrix of uh, electromagnetic frequency hell uh, is this satanic ritual abuse. Trauma-based uh, induction into this program it can take many forms, of course, but let's not forget that. And that is certainly uh, linked to uh, institutionalized, weaponized pedophilia from uh, the church to the boardroom and everywhere in between. It's, it is a, just a horribly ugly, dark uh, situation. Back in a minute with Brian Two. Okay, welcome back. Talking about uh, the world, the invisible world of mass mind control and individual mind control that is, uh, it's just extraordinary. Talking with Brian Two, T-E-W, about this. Go ahead, Brian. Well, uh, to answer your question about the hive mind teams, they're, you know, they're, people want to know where they are, where they're coming from. They're not in some underground base somewhere. They're, they're in every town, every city in America. They're, the, uh, they're, they're hiding in plain sight. The best secret is that which, which is hidden in plain sight. And these hive mind teams are hiding in plain sight. They're the psychiatrists at the local mental hospital. They're the psychologists at the local children's clinic. They're the you know, neuroscientists at the local university, et cetera. Okay, they're hiding in plain sight, and and you know, you know that that these cognitive researchers are the ones that are responsible for a lot of the torture and assassination that goes on for the purposes of training, research, and development in mind control technologies. Um, they're using two interfaces, like we said, the brain to computer interface. That's the supercomputer, the sophisticated and advanced exascale system, downloads all of your, you know all electromagnetic activity, all these synaptic responses, the electromagnetic emissions of the victim's brain is downloaded at speed of light. Energy travels at speed of light, so they can download, upload at speed of light. Sure. Back into a database as they build, as the supercomputer is programmed to build uh, using various software programs, a cognitive model of your brain uh, to eventually achieve direct behavioral control over you. And, you know, the second interface, the, the, uh, the hive mind teams these cognitive researchers are using is the electronic brain-to-brain interface. Uh, it's basically a neurochip, a little smaller than a grain of sand inside the body or gear of the hive mind team members. Uh, so they're not, you know, in some office somewhere. No, they're actually out in the field around you trying to interact with you constantly. Uh, and that's part of the organized stalking. Uh, so the electronic brain-to-brain interface allows them to uh, inject to manipulate the the uh, uh, brainwave signature of the victim to to inject once they've you know been able to build a cognitive model of the victim's brain to begin to 
to clone their their one of the uh, one of the people in, involved in the teens is called a clone. This is basically you know a psychiatrist, psychologist, etc., the cognitive researcher that basically clones his brainwave signature to that of the victim, so that he can begin to inject with his thoughts, his memories, his sensations into the victim's subconscious to manipulate the mental substrate of the victim, the self. Got it. Um, and so that's what you know. This is. They're trying to achieve many things with this technology, such as interdimensional communications, training, research, and development in interdimensional communications like synthetic telepathy, remote viewing, etc. They're trying to learn uh, how to manipulate matter, energy, and space with their brain waves. They're trying to learn how to achieve knowledge by mere contemplation, such as accelerated learning, where you know you would turn the brain of the, of the person into a you know a giant search engine like Google or you know, Encyclopedia, et cetera, et cetera. It just goes on and on. There are a lot mm -hmm. of reasons this is going on. Um, but they're using three platforms to target their victims. People think they're being attacked with cell phones. I've, I've heard, heard them say that. They're being attacked with drones and helicopters. No, you're not. No, they are not being attacked. The technology is – now, the, the, the provocations, you know, the, the stalking may include such, such things. Uh, to provoke the victim into emotional responses, which can be remotely measured and integrated back into R&M data. There are constant mind games which are necessary. But you're being attacked by a supercomputer, and it's using one of three platforms. It's using a tower, a satellite, or what's called a mobile platform. Okay, and so can, can it, Brian? That, can they not? Can they not also just use? Uh, the Gwen Towers for a national coverage or the grid for regional or local coverage. They can introduce any frequency they want into the grid. It goes right into the home or the office or the location of the individual and emanates and radiates from the wiring in the house. That's another possible platform, isn't it? Well, um, again, the, the, they, can, they can manipulate the the uh, you know the the energy grid inside of a home using a you know, target. They do they use the the information required uh, by the manipulation of, of of the energy grid, the smart meter uh, info, et cetera, to determine the activities, the composition, the composition habits of the victim. Uh, but all that goes back to the mapping of the brain of the victim. They're using physical and psychological trauma. This is very important. Okay, they're using physical trauma and psychological trauma to map out and reverse engineer the sensory and neural pathways of the victim's brain and central nervous system. Hmm. So constant you know, torture, to map out trauma to, to, to the victim's anatomy, to map out each region of the victim's anatomy. Give me an example uh, of torture. Directed energy torture. Uh, you know, your skin begin to, begin to modulate the stream of energy, causing targeting the cerebral cortex, causing mm -hmm. your skin to burn. Well, your skin is not really burning, but the mm -hmm. sensation is just as real. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, or you know, they can cause uh, you know other forms of pain, you know, pulsating pain to the head and ears. Um, you know, they can basically by by simple by simple modulation of the stream, the phase, frequency, and amplitude of this bidirectional stream of energy, they can target any region, any organ of the human anatomy, because each re the human anatomy is a vibratory organism. Each area, each region, each organ. Vibrant. Has its own vibration. Yes, I understand. Right, right. They can, can they right. not also induce in that individual uh, severe states of anxiety, depression, uh, elation, whatever they want? They can play with that person and make them feel like they're having a nervous breakdown, I would think. That can cause them to have one. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, all of that, all of that is part of their, their, their tactics designed to, to, to use trauma, physical and psychological trauma, to map out the sensory and neural pathways of the victim's brain and central nervous system because they're trying to achieve one thing, essentially. They're trying to reverse engineer the will, intellect, and emotion of the victim. The, in order to do that, you know, the victim must play the game. The, the, the technology is based off of a lot of different things. One of the main uh, tactics, that one of the main processes they're using is the hypergame theory. Uh, you know, if you understand say say that again, theory, please. Hypergame? Hyper. There, yeah, hyper game theory. There's uh, probably right. one of the most important things to understand about mind control technologies and how to, how to learn how to, to defeat them, to disrupt their technologies, to understand the non-cooperative gaming theorem. It's called the moniker is called the hyper game theory. Basically, hyper game theory is essentially two models, two models combined into one. It's game theory applied to decision tree modeling, and John Nash used that that model. 
game theory and applied it to decision tree modeling, and he, and he, and he was able to mathematically prove that by um, constantly and perpetually altering any value in the model, one can constantly and perpetually alter that model's expected outcome. So with, with CIA and DIA mind control technologies, the model is the victim. Okay, so by constantly and perpetually altering any value in the daily activities, daily life, finances, health and well-being, et cetera, of the victim, they can constantly and perpetually alter the outcome of the daily life, daily activities, et cetera, of the victim, forcing the victim into an endless series of counter moves, forced adjustments each day trying to function and survive. This is, this is very important because each counter move, each forced adjustment the victim makes trying to function and survive the trauma, is an evoked potential. It's a synaptic response in the victim's brain, which can be remotely measured by the supercomputer and integrated back into r and data. Right. So right. hyper game theory. They're using even the tactics, the organized stalking, and we'll get into that in just a second, is based on this, this model known as the hyper game theory. So basically what the system is designed to do, uh, and there are, there are a lot of things that, it, it, you know, it's, that they're doing, basically it's, it's understand but there are key words involved that help a person understand how the technology is being deployed against them. Um, and it's a fabricated and falsified stream of energy. It contains data, okay? And any set of brainwaves can be remotely captured from the victim and then constantly and then, you know, held and perpetually replayed in the victim's brain. So what they're doing is they're using the victim's own memories against the victim. So oh, yeah. Captures wow. those brain yeah. Waves. yeah, 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 yeah. Captures those set of brainwaves from you, okay, and memories, emotions, sensations. It captures that, and then it injects it repeatedly. The technology is designed, the supercomputer is designed, it's programmed to remotely capture random bits of your senses, and then to inject, to, to first fabricate stories, mental suggestions. These are called thought-triggered attacks at speed of light, to fabricate these mental suggestions injected back into the subconscious of the victim to, to interrogate the victim to mentally interrogate the victim, to harass, to distract, to torture the victim into submission to the system's influence. So it's all a deadly game of deception and manipulation. The entire technology can be summed up in one sentence. CIA and DOD mind control technologies can really be summed up in one sentence. It is a deadly game of deception and manipulation, nothing more, based on that model, the hyper game theory, or one of them. Okay. All right. Let me ask you a question. The individual TIs who are being gang stalked, hyper gamed, they are, I assume, beta tests. This is, this is being done to gather data on how to apply it to the masses all at once. Correct? They're learning. This is that we're in the, we're in the process where they're building their, their entire infrastructure to run the whole human race at some point right correct it's being scaled up to cover all 318 million americans obviously right um at some point you know that it will that will that's the picture but organized stalking is simple to understand okay if you just understand it's based on one thing and one thing only choice reference patterns the choice reference patterns of the victim okay the what are what are choice references their memories Previous memories. Right. Okay, what are patterns? They're a pattern of the previous memories of the victim. It's called choice reference patterns. So they basically profile the victim. They, they, they build a, a profile of the composition habits of the victim. And then based on those previous choice references of the victim, they begin to station the organized stalkers at various vantage points. So based on those previous choices, where well, they know the victim is going to go. Okay, because of the victim's memory. Remember, they're targeting your memory and thought process. Mind control technologies are designed to interfere with the memory and thought process. So the organized stalking is based off that premise, choice, reference, pattern. They're going to they're gonna target you with organized stalking based on your previous choices at those locations, your favorite cafes. In order to understand organized stalking, you have to go back and look at a pattern of your previous choices. Your favorite restaurants, your favorite bars, your favorite you know, modes of transportation, etc., Okay, and then once you understand that organized stalking is based on one thing, choice, reference, patterns, you must understand what it's comprised of, and that's two things. Based on one thing, choice, reference, patterns, but comprised of two things, and that's situational scenarios and conversational scenarios. And those situational and conversational scenarios, street theater, 
a street theater, okay, mind games, will always be based on events or topics that they know will capture the victim's attention. Right. So the organized stalking is designed to force the victim to respond. Remember, each response, each response trying to overcome the organized stalking, trying to each forced adjustment away from the harassment is a synaptic response and evoke potential in your brain, which can be remotely measured by the supercomputer and integrated back into r and data as the supercomputer continues to build a cognitive model of your brain and central nervous system. That's organized talking. That's the simple definition of it. All right. We got it. Very good. Okay. So the stream, it's important to understand the stream. The stream, based off your brainwave signature, okay, but basically, it's, it's a fabricated and falsified. When I say fabricated, when I say a fabricated and falsified stream, what I mean is fabricated are your own previous memories, your own previous brainwave patterns, your own previous sets of brainwaves. The system copied and it's holding and is injecting perpetually back into your subconscious. That's fabricated. Falsified are those brainwaves, those memories, for example, emotions, etc. The uh, supercomputer was able to layer in with the neuroprogramming, for example, at night, the dream modulation, the neurolinguistic programming, etc. So they layer these in at night. Well, organized stalking is necessary to determine, engage, and measure the effectiveness of their technology. So they got they got to determine whether the neuroprogramming is effective. So using trigger stimuli, trigger words, trigger objects, trigger colors, trigger you know, symbols, etc., they have the organized stalkers engage in these mind games, street theater. You know, constantly to, to, to determine if, if the neuroprogramming the night before, et cetera, was effective. Hmm. So the organized stalkers are basically, they're used basically, well, they're used for a number of, organ, organized stalking is used for a number of different reasons. For surveillance, to keep the victim from defeating the technology. For example, if the victim was able to move into a dead zone, they'd have to flush the victim out. Um, to uh, discredit the victim, try having a, a rational conversation with anyone about the fact that a hundred hostile strangers are following you. It's not possible. They know that, etc. But primarily to, to provoke you constantly, to force you to respond. Their entire technology is based on their ability to capture your attention at regular intervals and force you, force uh -huh, you to uh -huh. respond to them. Wow, pretty grim. Pretty grim. All right, so what, what are they yeah. going to do with all these TIs who have been so thoroughly programmed, databased, and uploaded? Uh, the computer will know as much about them as, as probably they do about themselves, if not more. So what are they going to do with these people? What's the, what's the net gain? What is their goal? Why are they doing this? That, those are questions that I'm sure many out there are asking. Well, again, we basically talked about why. They're, they're training, research, and development. Yeah. What they're going to do with the victims after they've reached their objectives depends on the victim. It but they're essentially you know, disposable, they have... though. Right. Well, it do they don't want witnesses. Listen, if you're most mind control victims, there are hundreds of programs, okay? Uh, state of the art mind control, trauma based mind control, yeah. Omega programming, beta programming, et cetera. There are hundreds of programs, okay? Um, it depends what what they do with the victim, with, with, the, with the targeted individual, it depends on the program they have placed the victim into. For example, you know, state-of-the-art mind control is based off the ignorance of the victim. The victim has no idea they're even targeted with this technology. You right. know, their life right. goes to hell. Their health, their their career is destroyed. Their families are destroyed. But they never knew. They, they never know. Idea. They never know. And they'll never, many of them, of course, will reject it out of hand as being even possible. They'll say ridiculous. They won't know at all. No. Right, yeah. So it's not necessary for the, you know, for necessarily for, for the government to do away with them, unless right, they, uh, right. they, that's part of the the, 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 the objective of the experiment. But primarily, they have four, they have four, uh, four objectives to, to choose from once the, they once they have achieved their objectives with the training, research, and development of the mind control victim. Once they reach their end goal, okay, they have basically four means of of, of determining what to do with the victim. If the first is if the victim is not, you know, if killing the victim is not the preferable option, uh -huh. then, you know, they'll set the victim up and frame the victim, have them thrown into a prison or mental institution, right. as Dr. Robert Duncan said, or they'll mind hobble the victim, uh, just target the victim's brain. That mind control. hobble the victim, okay. Right. Uh, so those are, those are basically the four means that they have, the four uh, processes they have of, of dealing with the victim once they've reached their objective. It's not, it's not a pretty picture. Uh, but that, that's what, that's what's going to happen to the victim. Okay. But right now, all of your, all that you're seeing, all this torture and, and terror and harassment is basically the American government using their own citizens 
to 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 implement and deploy the technology, the training, research, and development behind it. I mean, they, they've got the infrastructure in place already. And it's very uh, easy to recruit, have. Brian, it's very easy to recruit uh, citizens to do the uh, the legwork, so to speak. You give them a, a, you know, a couple hundred bucks a day, whatever. You tell them you're really doing something important for the country and its security and its future. Uh, and many of them are only too happy to take that mantle up, right? Well, yeah, I mean, organ- if people want to know who, you know who are the organized stalkers. Basically, organized stalkers are one thing, government informants, mostly low-level government informants turned into provocateurs, okay, to provoke, to provoke the victim constantly, okay? Right, right. So they're just low-level informants, most of them at the street level, that uh, organized stalking is, is based on picket surveillance, okay? Picket surveillance. So so basically, uh, and elite frogging and other tactics which they use, that, that, that's organized stalking in a nutshell. What was so, it? Elite um, what? Elite what? Picket, picket surveillance. I got that, but you said elite fogging? Uh, it sounded like you said fogging. Uh, I'm sorry, leap frogging. Oh, another, leap another frogging. Tactics. Okay, leap, got it, Basic thank you. Surveillance and counter gotcha. surveillance gotcha. method. Um, and so, you know, these, these, they're used as verification triggers and verification markers for the technology. So they can't allow the victim, the mind control victim, to engage in a random pattern of, of you know, a chaotic and random pattern uh, of, of situations and conversations. It disrupts their technology. Remember, every response of the trauma-based mind control victim must be verified. They must constantly run the victim through a verification routine each day where the system probes the victim for a set of responses, okay? And then once the victim, if the victim is able to counter that, those probes, and the operator will try, you know, will stop that process and try to verify by other means, okay? But they're constantly running the victim through a verification process, and basically verification is forcing the victim into a pattern of behavior, a pattern of emotion a pattern of sensations, okay? So what they're doing is they're, they're trying to force the victim into emotional responses after emotional responses until they can generate enough of these responses from the victim, these synaptic responses, which can then be correlated into what are called response statistics. And then from that statistical data, those response statistics, a coherent pattern of thought is determined, which can then be identified, developed, and integrated back into r data. So, you know, they're, they're constantly forcing the victim to respond. And these, and these government informants turn provocateurs, these low-level thugs on the street. Uh, you know, that's what they are. They're just provocateurs, low-level informants that are used to constantly harass and provoke. Remember, they're using not just physical trauma, but psychological trauma. Sure. Force the victim. That's why they need to the, – the, the, the technology is – the, the torture, for example, is, is designed to be brutal precisely so no one will believe it is happening. Well, so are the tactics, the, the violence, the harassment, the threats of violence. The host- they're designed to create a hostile environment everywhere the victim goes to force the victim into isolation, to force the victim back into their home or their apartment where there's no external activities going on, chaotic and random events going on around the victim, which entrains the victim's brain away from their you know, their neuroprogramming, the visual and verbal entrainments the system is using 24 hours, 24 hours a day to keep your brain entrained to the system. They need to minimize any external... Okay, I got it. I got it. We got two minutes left. I have to, again, uh, repose uh, the, the question. So what is the ultimate goal of putting these people through such hell? Is this an interim, uh, a preliminary, uh, or an advanced piece of work that is being done to uh, come up with a, a nationwide program. Are these people being sacrificed as individual experiments? Are they learning from them all the time? What are they doing? They're doing three things. Okay, they're doing three things. The mind control technologies of the CIA and DOD can be comprised in all, all of it falls into one of three categories. Everything they're doing to their victims, no matter what program they're in, falls into one of three categories. Censorship, memory management, and direct behavioral control. That's what they're doing to them. And they're doing it for, to, they're using them as guinea pigs uh, for training, research, and development. Censorship is simply to restrict the victim from engaging in any type of activity, external activity, which disrupts or interferes with their technology. Okay? That's called censorship. So they'll use trauma and pain, or they'll use drowsiness, et cetera. By modulation of the phase, frequency, and amplitude of the stream, they'll, they'll use, you know, uh, pain stimulus. That's called censorship. Okay, are we talking about like arthritis pain symptoms, uh, headaches, uh, backaches? What are we talking about? I get the skin burning thing, but what, they can right. do almost anything, I guess. They can. Again, the human anatomy is vibratory. But uh-huh. by targeting the, 
cere- by targeting the cerebral cortex of the victim, they can manipulate any any region of the human anatomy. Okay. They can cause you to feel pain like your skin is burning, even though your skin is not really burning. The sensation is the same. Uh-huh. But that's the first category. It's called censorship. The second category that they're doing to the victims is called memory management. That's that's basically it, it. It basically falls into remote neural monitoring and remote neural manipulation. And memory management is simply, you know, blocking the real memories of the victim, the thoughts, and injecting with fabricated and falsified memories. So, so you're remembering things that never happened, all right? And you swear, and you could probably pass a lie detector that it did happen, but it didn't, because it's there in your right. memory banks, all right? Right. Well, that's memory management. Okay. Simply got blocking it. an injection method. Okay, blocking number three. Then we got to wrap it up this hour. Go ahead. Number three. Direct behavioral control. Uh, basically, they, they have different ways of achieving this. Obviously, once the cognitive model is complete, you know, right. the mental substrate, the self of the victim is mapped out, then they can speed up the model and turn the victim into the worst satanic monster imaginable or slow down the model in their database and turn the finest athlete into a human vegetable. That's one method of direct behavioral control. So they're targeting the the uh, daily motives and emotional perceptions of the victim. They want the victim to become dependent upon the system's output. The RM supercomputer is constantly attacking with memory records. Hundreds of times a day you're being attacked, okay, we're using memory references. So it's a fabricated, falsified stream of energy designed to interfere with your memory and thought process to get you to become dependent, of, not you, but whoever's targeted, to become dependent upon the system's output, meaning you believe that the impulse injections and the memory references that are being injected, that are being injected, artificially injected into your mind by the system, by this bi-directional stream of energy, you believe they're your own. They want you to become dependent upon the system's output, so that, or at least they want to believe that the responses that they're seeing from you are consistent. And at that point is when the system, the RM supercomputer begins, supercomputer begins to fabricate these subconscious responses. Which you know pretends are indicators of what you just mentioned, indicators of honesty, dishonesty, positive recognition, anxiety, etc. And right. then they use those 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 memory references, those impulse injections, to convince you that the responses that you're having are your own. Wow. When it's okay. Not, All right. Artificial. Pretty pretty you damned. Pretty evil. Pretty damned evil. All right, Brian. Very good. Hold on a minute. We'll take a break and come right back and uh, pursue this a little further. Talk more about uh, 5G in the next hour some other things, and uh, some of you may be wondering how all of this is being delivered most often uh, that we're discussing now. We'll talk about that as well. Okay, welcome back. Talking with Brian Tu, that's spelled T-E-W, about mass mind control manipulation and all the rest of it. Uh, Okay, Brian, not to jump too far ahead, but 5G. 5G is coming. Uh... We have people who have looked into this. Uh, One of our colleagues talked to somebody who is a contractor putting together on the job one of the new 5G towers, and he has been working in the industry for for apparently many years, 3G, 4G. He says there are lots of equipment pieces that he's installing. He knows how to install them, but he has no idea and is not being told what they're for, what their use is, nothing. Nothing. He said, I don't have any idea what they're doing, but it's really advanced stuff. So what do you know about 5G and how this may or may not be a platform to distribute some of the ELF, extreme low frequency, control mechanisms that are being used on people? Uh, Certainly it's a platform, is it not? Uh, It would, you know... I'm not saying that they wouldn't they wouldn't use the the ta- the 5G towers to deploy the technology. Obviously, they could they could utilize those. They could run out the top portions of the tower, and then utilize those towers as as part of the infrastructure that they use. But my understanding of fifth generation of uh, this this 5G is basically it's just it's just a higher data rate. It's just a higher you know cost reduction and energy saving type of you know capacity to 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 achieve uh, the delivery of information at higher speeds. And so I, you know, I don't, I don't, based on my research, but I'm not refuting the research of anyone else who knows more about 5G than I do. I really have no point of reference on 5G as it relates to the technology. I, I don't see why they would need to deliver 20 gigabytes or more per second when the technology is, is based on this hidden carrier frequency within this electromagnetic, uh, this stream of electromagnetic low frequency waves specifically tuned to the brainwave signature of the victim. This bit stream would not, would not, it would not be necessary. Uh, in my understanding, the, the the millimeter waves are higher 
you know, at 15 gigahertz and higher and uh, with 5G. And so you're talking about the delivery of high speed delivery of information. Yes. Uh, you know, and there are various other 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 reasons for 5G. Yes. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, I don't know much about that. I have no point of reference on it, but I don't see that it's related in any way to the deployment of the, of the technology. OK, using. it they, doesn't they have. Generate. Yeah, it doesn't have to be related, but it, it certainly can be. Uh, it's there. If they want to use it, they'll find a way to use it. Uh, there's clearly like something. Three platforms, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. There's clearly something in the offing here that is big and dark and unpleasant. Uh, 5G uh, is going to be enormous. Uh, go ahead, but th that may be off topic here to a degree. Uh, how? Yeah, it is with me. I don't know much about it, but it, you know, as far as 5G is, is involved in the deployment of mind control technologies, I don't see that it's related. I'm not saying that there's, there's, you know, there, when it comes to Very the good. spectrum and the that, modems and modems. Yeah, fair enough. No, no, no problem. Right. Uh, okay. Uh, the idea of using smartphones to actually read, calculate, and send back brainwave signatures is another possibility that's being talked about by people who study 5G. So you've got a two-way situation going there, too. Interesting. And again, I have no point of reference on the technology, but uh, again, 5G... Cell phones and, and mind control technologies are just basically, they're basically platform, they're control devices. Okay, they're not, they're not using cell phones to, to target the brainwave signature of the victim. That's not how the technology is, but based on the research that I've been given from scientists and that I've been able to discern from my research building off of their resources, it's, it, the, the cell phone technology, cell phones are used in mind control technologies, but they're basically control devices. So, you know, if there's, if, if, for example, if the firewall breaks down between the hive mind team members and, and, and the, uh, because, you know, theoretically you're dealing with a bi-directional stream and if the, you know, the clone member of the hive mind team has cloned his brainwave signature to your brainwave signature and he can read your thoughts in real time, then theoretically you should be able to read his thoughts in real time being part of that same, uh, uh, uh but, you, but you can't because of the firewall, which is actually another human brain. Uh, and so the, the, that's why they move together in teams of three to six people per team, uh, because if the firewall breaks down, then they've got trouble. So, so they'll use these, you know, they'll, they'll dial a specific number on, on the cell phone and they'll shut the, they'll shut the, uh, the BCI down, the brain to computer interface down, excuse me, the electronic brain to brain interface down okay. momentarily to determine right. what, what happened. Uh, so, so my understanding of a cell phone, they're just, they're just control devices. They're not actually involved in everything, everything is dependent upon that unbroken stream of energy mm -hmm. interface okay. and nanotechnology right. let, 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 the brain called transcranial brain stimulation. Got it. Let me go back. How do we get the actual ELF for the transcranial stimulation and control transmitted to people? What is the most common, and you mentioned this earlier, I just want to loop back and, and catch it again. What are the platforms, what are the control devices, the dissemination devices more appropriately used to send and receive these bit streams, these torrents, back and forth from a TI, a t targeted victim. What are the platforms? Well, essentially, what, what's necessary for their technology to work properly, for this fabricated and falsified stream of energy to be able to manipulate, to remotely monitor and manipulate the brainwaves of the victim, is it, basically, for example, they need to achieve integration completion between the victim's brain and the supercomputer, okay, uh, without the victim's responses to their specific stimuli. And, that, and, and, and that's, that's what verification is. It's integration completion, okay? So, uh, for example, uh, if the victim doesn't respond to their street theater, then integration, then verification process breaks apart and mind control technologies fail. So the street theater, the mind games, are simply part of the, of the, uh, of the, of the tactics used to force the victim to keep responding so that these three platforms tower satellite and mobile platform can interface with the victim during there are basically two stages there are basically two things mind control is based off of uh simply uh based off of that would be remote neural monitoring and remote neural manipulation okay. remote neural monitoring is not mind control remote neural manipulation is mind control uh remote neural monitoring is basically the the ability of the system to to identify to read to image to measure and to transmit data regarding the neural activity of your brain or whoever's targeted. Okay, that, that's the simple definition of remote neural monitoring. It gets more complicated than that. There's formulation, the first stage of remote neural monitoring, which is the 
cataloging and collecting of your memory references, the data regarding those memory references, and check it back into the subconscious. Right, right. The, 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 the supercomputer collects and catalogs. Then there's predictive integration, which is the next stage of remote neural monitoring, which is basically the interpretation of that data. Okay, but every the 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 the, the actual infrastructure itself. Okay. We don't know much about these exascale supercomputers. You know, there's extremely advanced technology, and the supercomputer basically, uh, it, for example, it would take one person, one human being, one billion years to achieve in what you know what one exascale system supercomputer can do in one second. Got it. So you're dealing with a system of remote neural networks. That's what's targeting you. Okay, remote neural networks. Okay, with a will, intellect, and emotion of their own. The, the system, the RM supercomputer that's targeting you, okay, that uses one of these three relay stations, the mm-hmm. tower, satellite, or mobile platform, it mm-hmm. actually locks on to your emotional state. Mm-hmm. Once the cognitive model, this generic model is, is built, it begins to lock on to your emotional state, okay? And then it begins to, um, it begins to, not just to monitor, but to manipulate that emotional state. They need to map out all seven vectors of the emotional state of the victim in order to create this cognitive model, this this reverse engineered will, intellect, and emotion. That's your human soul, by the way, okay? The human soul is the will, intellect, and emotion of the victim. They figured out what to do with the human body. The five senses, they can pretty much achieve whatever they want mm-hmm. by manipulation of the human anatomy with these with, with this mind control technology. Now they're going after the soul, the will, intellect, and emotion. Okay, and to achieve that, the supercomputer must lock on to your emotional state. And so anything which interferes with that supercomputer is designed to stop using one of those three platforms, using and by way of censorship, uh, memory management, and direct behavioral control. That's what the Mandela effect is. This hmm. absolutely ridiculous government-created phenomena called the Mandela effect mm-hmm. is simply a mass mind control model for training, research, and development to test and validate the collective consciousness, the memory references of the geopsych. The geopsych mean, meaning the, 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 the memory references of certain segments of society. Okay. In order to force victims to become dependent upon memory references which never existed. Which All right, okay, I, I've, got to go, I've got to go back to my, my earlier question. Is this program in a developmental stage at this point? Or is it considered a done deal and they're just they're just playing with people getting ready to roll it out to even more of the general populace what where are they on this on this whole no, program still, timeline R&D. Yeah, yeah, that, that, R&D phase. all right that's 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 a question very good thank you yeah the best, basically you know it's just going to get worse it's not going to get better mind control will soon permeate as far as your you know where, where are we? Mind control technologies will soon permeate every facet of American society. Every facet. Every, every facet. Every, to get, I got to get, it. To get medical care. To, soon you'll be able to make a phone call with your brain waves, hands-free, of course, uh-huh. using a brain-to-computer interface. Soon, you know, you, right now, these, 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 these brain-to-computer interfaces, which you're seeing on the market today, such as, you know, the, the, ability, to mu- the ability to move prosthetic arms and limbs, driverless mm-hmm. cars. Mm-hmm. Mattel has a Mattel has a child's game where a child moves a metal ball around on the table with his brain waves. All of that's based on Mattel has that now technology. already. I didn't know that. Yeah, that's available now. Yeah, I mm-hmm. mean, there's, there's a lot more already on the market. I, I don't even know mm-hmm. about. But you're seeing you're seeing these. This this is artificial intelligence. The mind control technologies of the CIA and Department of Defense are not based on artificial intelligence. That's old hat technology. That's artificial intelligence as we know it is based upon if and then algorithms. Okay. Okay, but they do. Way. Hold on, hold on. Don't they have to come up with? And this is what I've read: a basic algorithm for an AI to to interface with and dispose of, i.e., take care of, solve uh, any a problem, an issue. Um, some kind of a decision has to be made. So they give them algorithms to do this. Uh, they have to have one for basically every, every issue. That's why the story, I had a story about a month ago now. There is a move afoot, and when they talk about we're going to work on this, or we may work on this, or we're planning on working on this, usually means they've already done it. They're going to teach AI common sense. Human common sense. Now, what does that mean? That's a pretty damn subjective term. Your common sense may not be my common sense. So whose common sense are they going to teach AI? And how relevant is that? That's a huge issue. 
but that's where they allegedly are. Yeah. Allegedly. No, no, they're way, no, they're way beyond that. That's okay. That's they, they, that was my preface. I yeah. said, okay, I, yeah. go ahead. That's what we know they, about they, them. They actually, they actually abandoned the math a long time ago because they realized that no matter how many trillion and billion and octillion mathematical equations, algorithms you create, they will still not cover every scenario. Everything. That's right. Too, that's right. People are too unique, too different, too even in their right. makeup. So they that's, abandoned that's right. they abandoned the math. Okay. They moved to a re, they moved to a reverse engineering of the human mind. And that's what CIA and DOD mind control. So they're the terraforming the, the individual human brain, the mind, the psyche, the soul, you name it. They're gonna go through and remake it in whatever image and configuration they want. The system, the, the supercomputers are designed to clone, to download one's entire persona and psyche back into its database. I and understand. To, right, and then based on, you know, that cognitive model being complete, to, to be, begin to be able to predict and influence in advance the reference choices of the victim during thought composition. As the victim is formulating his thoughts and preparing to act, the supercomputer already has that persona and psyche, all your emotional state downloaded every vector of your emotional state downloaded so i can already predict and influence mm -hmm. those events in sure. your life in advance sure. and achieve direct behavioral control over you sure okay all right so uh this would be the last generation of uh really quasi unfettered free thought you know uh i i think we passed like dr robert duncan said uh, in an interview that he gave we, I think we passed that stage a long time ago. We may have. I think that, yeah, I think that, you know, the, the, it, you know, it, I think that mind control technologies uh, that, that exist today, that are, that are on the market today are nothing. I mean, the government is about 80 years ahead of the technology available in the market. Right. And they're 500 to 700 years. We got this from, from somebody who was inside the information who uh -huh. had the detailed information before he was assassinated. Uh, they're 500 to 700 years ahead of the techno with the technology which is not available on the market. So, uh, you know, they, it's hard to gauge and measure, you know, where they are. Uh, all we can do is, from my own personal experiences, begin to try to, you know, uh, take the, the, the research and resources available, and then based on that research and those resources, contrast our own personal experiences with the, with the technology uh, itself. So, I, you know, I can't tell you, based on you know, my, my limited research, you know, how far advanced they are, but I think we're probably, as Dr. Robert Duncan said, it's, free will is probably a moot point now. All right. I'm not going to argue that. There are always, yeah. uh, there are always some exceptions, but they've got it to the point that I think they can impose as much control as they, they essentially want over an awful lot of people. And, and without the, because the technology is designed to mimic the normal cognitive behavior of the victim. Uh huh. They can do so without the victim even knowing. No, but no, or the victim's friends won't know it. Their even their spouse won't know it necessarily. That's how they create these hauntings. That's how the CIA uses the occult and haunted houses and other spoofing tactics against people, against you know targeted individuals and and against entire uh -huh. communities to uh -huh. try to determine what they can maintain as truth to learn how to subdue or to radicalize a person's belief system. Because there's simply, you know, most people don't even know they're, they're being targeted. Millions of people are being targeted right now with this technology tied to the, these, these supercomputers, these system of remote neural, neural networks. Right. Okay? And, and hundreds of thousands of them are trauma-based, and, and the majority of them don't even know. Uh, so uh, unless you have some basic understanding of the technology and the tactics, you know, because the technology is designed to mimic your normal cognitive behavior, it's very difficult for people to determine they're actually targeted with this technology, especially when you're constantly being run through a verification routine every day where, where the system is verifying your responses by forcing you into patterns of behavior. It gets frustrating. Wow. It gets, you know, mm -hmm. uh, debilitating. But unless, you, you know, you, you have some sense of trauma or pain, it's really uh, un, you know, not, not possible to determine that the government was behind it to begin with, you know? It's using your own memories against you. They're using your own responses, your own motivation. Your own memories against you, and in many cases, those memories don't really exist, except in your mind where they were, they were placed. Right. Well, they're, those are falsified. Okay, they do layer in falsified memories, but they also use your own memories, which are fabricated memories, memory sets of brain waves. Okay? Mm. So, uh, and sometimes, you know, People don't realize that it's you know, it's my memory, therefore it must be you know it must be me. It must it can't be you know some some artificial 
a supercomputer injecting this into, into my brain. This is my memory. So they personally identify with the thought, with that, with that synaptic response, with that motivational impulse. So unless there's some way they can contrast their own normal experience from, from their, contrast their own uh, normal memory and thought process from the, from, which you do by learning to read active memory. If you can read active memory, you can begin to contrast your own normal memory and thought process from the artificial impulse injections that the supercomputer is attacking you with. Okay? This technology is so advanced and so sophisticated, you could spend hours talking about it. Um, and people, a lot of times it just goes right over their heads. You know, they, they just don't realize it's like you're talking rudimentary Chinese to them. Um, and unfortunately, Unless people can get a grasp, a basic understanding of the technology, they'll never know they're targeted to begin with. Right. Well said. Okay. Uh, so, how many people are working in this industry of mass mind control and TIs and all of, all the things we've been discussing? How big of a program is it? How it's black ops. Oh, it's huge. We know that. It's huge. Yeah. So what, there must be many hundreds of thousands of people involved with this to some degree or another. They have to be. Right. Right. Well, uh, you know, we can, I can only talk about, you know, what the research... And, and are, the, are the universities not uh, fronting some of it? Of course. Of course. Well, no. They're they always right. are. Again, there's four, four, four organizations and agencies behind it all. DOD, NSA, CIA, right. CIA. Right. Well, they but kick they, out contracts contract, right and left, remember. Yeah. Right. Well, those, those deep state contractors, okay, those shadow government contractors, and there's a difference between the deep state and the shadow government. The shadow government is basically two things. It's, it's the, the Department of Defense and the intelligence agencies. So that's a shadow government. The deep state is an entirely different uh, uh, entity. It's basically, in simple terminology, the deep state is, is the military-industrial complex. Right. Okay? Sure. Uh, and so, so the contractors, are, uh, you know, who knows how many contractors would be involved in this? Because they're, you know, would have to be in, you know, uh, they're in every city and every town in America. You have to think there are hundreds of thousands. Cognitive, there will always be this. The, the hive my team members will always be cognitive researchers. Now, once you get down to the surveillance team level, then you're dealing with, you know, you're dealing with swarmers. You're dealing with um, community-based agents. You're dealing with law enforcement. You're dealing with, you know, just a whole litany of, all the way down to these basic, you know, organized stalkers on the street, these thugs on the street. So, you know, if you count them as contractors, then it's innumerable. There's no way to gauge it. But these, these, the, the, the people that are involved, uh, uh, a lot of them, everything's highly compartmentalized. So people are only told what they need to know. Right. This prevents information linking. You know, if it gets, from, the, the CIA learned its lesson the hard way with the MK Ultra hearings in the 1970s with the Church Commission hearings. Yeah. So, you know, they're not going to use people where if they're caught, it can be traced back to them. They're using these contractors, and these contractors don't even know where their information, their data is going. They would not know, for example, that it's Lockheed Martin, that, you know, that they, and, and from Lockheed Martin, it's DARPA. They would not, you know, they would have no, the chain would break. They, everything's highly compartmentalized. So because it's so compartmentalized, it's difficult to gauge how many people are actively involved. Obviously, it would have to be hundreds of thousands of cognitive researchers alone. Um, but again, I mean, you know, they're not, they're not, they're hiding in plain sight. They're not in some underground base somewhere. These cognitive mm -hmm. researchers are mm -hmm. at the local university, college, they're the psychologists, the psychiatrists at the local hospital. You know, they're hiding in plain sight, just like the, the towers, uh, you know, these, these, these grid systems, these relay systems that the system is using, uh, hiding in plain sight. So it's difficult to say because we don't have, we don't have the data, you know, uh, but, uh, again, I mean, if people understand, if people can begin to understand how a computer multiplexer, okay, you're being attacked by a supercomputer. You're not being attacked by towers and satellites. They're simply the relay devices. A computer multiplexer is routing the signal to a tower, a satellite, a mobile platform, which then relays the signal to the digital receiver, similar to how cell phone technology is, mm -hmm. what is used. So mm -hmm. if you want to understand how, how it's deployed, just think of a cell phone. It's nothing like cell phone technology, but it helps a person in the theater of their mind because sure, I understand. how the technology yeah. is deployed. Yeah. So the, once it's relayed, the computer multiplexer routes the signal to the tower satellite or mobile platform, and the tower satellite or mobile platform relays the signal to the digital receiver. The digital receiver is then tracked and pinpointed in real time, just like a cell phone, except with CIA and DIA mind control technology. Uh -huh. The digital receiver is not a phone. It's a human brain. Yeah. Your brain. 
has been digitalized by the nanotechnology inside of it. You have become a walking digital receiver. And how many people are actually, you know, walking digital receivers? Well, everyone, if you want to be technical. You know, right. people think... We don't think... Uh, no, we we agree. We, we don't think anyone's escaped. Not if you uh, drink, breathe, or eat on this planet. Hold on a minute. We'll be right back with uh, Brian. Good job, Brian, explaining something that's very difficult to explain. You're doing it perfectly. Back in just a minute. Okay, and back with Brian, too. All right, Brian, what areas do we need to get in? We've got about uh, 20 minutes left or so here. Well, I do. I want to talk. I want to touch on the on the Mandela effect because this is really something that people need. I don't. I, as far as I know, I'm the only one trying to speak out and expose what's happening with the Mandela effect. Very important. So, Mandala so, or Mandela? Mandala. Mandela effect. Mandela effect. It's Spell Mandela it. Effect. This government created phenomena called the Mandela effect. It's entirely fabricated and falsified. It's it's, a, it's an entire right. government created phenomena to test and validate. The memory references, the collective consciousness of the geocyte, of okay. entire segments of society. Right. But before I wanted to talk about that, I wanted to basically touch on what you were saying just before you, we, we, went to, we went to break. It's difficult to determine how many people are targeted. Dr. Robert Duncan says, you know, tens of thousands that he knows of. Mm -hmm. That's his, his best estimate, but it's got mm -hmm. to be much, much higher. Mm -hmm. um, the problem is that these remote neural attacks, the impulse injections, etc., can, all of that can be achieved at lower intensities, and people will really only notice that they're being targeted with this technology at higher intensities. And by higher intensities, I mean torture, trauma-based mind control. Okay, you, the use of physical and psychological trauma to map out and reverse engineer the sensory. And so, okay, and included in that basket of torture can be things like uh, stress, uh, anxiety. Uh, I read something about tinnitus today, ringing in the ears. Like that, that's a that's a trauma torture. <laughs> I know all about it, yeah. Okay, that's yeah, a trauma torture method. Yeah, migraine headaches. There's another one. Go ahead. That's part of censorship. The use of trauma to disrupt the continuity of thought and erase short-term active memory. Mm -hmm. That's censorship. If you want to want to boil censorship down into just as, as most simplest definition. Remember, everything they're doing to their victims is based on three things. Censorship, memory management, direct behavioral control. Censorship is basically the use of trauma, uh, pain, uh, drowsiness, dizziness, etc., right. like they use on you, okay, to disrupt your continuity of thought and to erase short-term active memory. With you driving the car, they were able to use trauma, drowsiness, to disrupt your continuity of thought, causing an accident. Okay, mm -hmm. that's censorship. Mm -hmm. Okay, to censor your ability to engage in any type of external activity, which disrupts or interferes with their technology, or interferes with their technology. But again, because it can be achieved all of it at lower intensities, you really won't know you're even targeted unless you have a basic understanding of the technology. Unless, of course, you're being targeted at higher intensities, and by that, I, I, I again, torture. Uh, you know. Got it. Um, but all of that, you know, is basically, um, if you want to break it down, mind control, remote neural manipulation, to its simplest. You know, simplest sequence. It's basically the the ability of the supercomputer that's targeting you and attacking you to predict and influence. Those are the two key words: to predict and influence your reference choices, memory, uh -huh. Uh -huh. Okay? Uh, or impulse sequencing. That's the motivational impulses: anxiety, fear, paranoia. During thought composition, thought composition is that stage in your active memory, your short-term memory, when you're formulating your thoughts and you're preparing to act. That's when the system attacks. And remember, thought triggered attack. Energy travels at the speed of light. Okay, this bidirectional stream, unbroken stream of energy, is designed to attack you during thought composition, as you're formulating your thoughts to pitch you into some type of action or access sequence to deceive and manipulate you. That's mind control. That's the simplest definition of mind control mm. there is. Mm -hmm. Okay. Very so, good. um, but I want to, I want to talk about man, this Mandela effect, because it's part of my, mass mind control. It okay. really is. People don't realize what's happening with the Mandela effect. I mean, right. uh, you know, tell us, tell us what it is. What, what is the Mandela effect? All right. Okay. Well, okay. Well, man, man, the Mandela effect is nothing more than a, than a fabricated and falsified government created phenomenon. People don't realize this. Okay. To test and validate the collective consciousness of the geopsych. The geopsych mean, meaning uh, the memory references of, of segments of each society. Okay? okay, so that that's the geo site. So what they're doing is, okay, it's simply a mass, another mass mind control model for training, research, and development in geo site hive mind configuration. That's what it is. Uh, I'm absolutely amazed that rational, incredible people are even falling for it. 
okay? But unless you understand mind control, it's, it's premised on memory management, and that's what Mandela Effect is. It's basically global or societal memory management, huh. okay? This, this, this fabricated, falsified, government-created phenomena called the Mandela Effect is, is basically training, research, and development in global or societal hive mind configurations for the manipulation of that collective consciousness, those memory references of the society, the, the segment of society which they're, they're targeting, to learn how to reshape societal thoughts and behavior, to manipulate the daily motives and emotional perceptions of entire segments of society. That's, that's the Mandela effect. It's just a government-created, a government, I won't say, it's a fabricated, falsified government-created phenomenon. To, to measure and gauge how models of deception and manipulation can be utilized to force a population or a segment of society to become dependent upon the fabricated memory references which never existed. Hmm. Remember, we talked about, you know, they want you to become dependent upon the memory references. The belief sure. responses are your own. That's memory management, okay? So, such as, for example, positive recognition. So, to be able to manipulate, to remotely manipulate uh, entire segments of society at a time. So it's just simply, the Mandela effect is simply global memory management or societal memory management using, you know, these memory references which never existed to begin with. So if they can generate these hmm. falsified and fabricated memory references sure. and, and motivational impulses uh, from large groups of people at a time, then they can use, they can further their training, research, and development and how these supercomputers, these exascale remote neural networks uh -huh. can perceive the, the mass emotions of the geopsych as a whole. Remember, they're scaling this up for all 318 million Americans. And the Mandela, uh, this, this, this Mandela effect, the, the government contractors have used it on me on the Internet. I got a whole website dedicated to me. They're just, you know, they, they, they talk about my name's Mandela effect. Well, no, it's not. It's a memory reference which never existed. They're creating memory references, huh. fabricated and falsified memory references. Uh -huh. To Remember, this is a weapon system. You know, to not, it's not... It, again, they're going to tell you that mind control technologies are necessary for the betterment of humanity, to improve our economy, etc., to turn America and the industrialized nations of the world into a neuro society where people can communicate with each other by their brainwaves, with computers by their brainwaves. But that's all a cover story. It's a weapon system, okay? It's a weapon system designed to censor and control the sheepish masses, to restrict them at will. Mm -hmm. So they're mm -hmm. using the Mandela effect for training, research, and development to learn how to achieve that. There is no Mandela effect. There never was. It's simply the use of fabricated and falsified memory references, which never existed to force segments of society to become dependent upon the, 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 this, these vast mind control models of deception and manipulation, to learn how to achieve direct behavioral control over entire segments of society. At this but point in time, Brian, when they're implanting and embedding false memories in people, is it a, a one person, one operation, or are they doing this en masse and giving a whole yeah. lot of people the same false memory? So they're building yeah, up a, basically an entirely new cultural reflex that never happened. They can do this. Right, and in the first Gulf War, I don't know if you remember CNN and these other news agencies. They were they were broadcasting these tens of thousands of Iraqi soldiers. I don't remember how many there were. Just mass amount of soldiers, Iraqi soldiers, which were surrendering with their. With oh their yeah, they they thought they heard the voice of uh, of Allah, or whatever. Well, many of them. You know what that was? Right, it was falsified memory references. Any time, listen, memory is basically three things. If you break it down to its simplest level, it's just three things. You have short-term memory, long-term memory, and uh, sensory memory. Yeah. Now, it gets more complicated than that. You have residual memory, you have active memory, which is going to make it real simple. Okay, short-term memory, long-term memory, and what's called sensory memory. That's the three categories of memory. Well, they're targeting your short-term memory, your active memory, okay? I'm not saying that falsified memory uh, attacks don't happen, that these falsified memory references that they're not using, they are using. That's the, that's the Mandela effect, okay? Uh -huh, but uh -huh. these are, as Muslim soldiers, using synthetic telepathy, voice to skull, etc., sure, were sure. led to believe that these, that their God of their choice was speaking to them uh -huh. and telling them to dismantle their weapon. That's falsified memory. Remember, that's this, this, uh, this, this goes way back to the 1970s and, and, uh, 
Project Bluebeam. Yeah. Remember Bluebeam? All right. Well, that was s- simply oh. using uh, yeah. lasers to create visual images in the sky in the heavens of of uh, you know they do that? holy people, whatever. Yeah, go, right. go ahead. Yeah. To subdue or to radicalize. Absolutely. They want to learn. See, that's what the Mandela effect is. They're trying to determine what society can maintain as truth. They're trying right. to determine. See, they were on this long, society. so long. Blue Beam was going to be a, Blue Beam. Still, they may still use parts of it. All right, they go well, over. They yeah. yeah. All right. So a lot, yeah, a lot of times, for example. That's right. That's right. Sure. Well, the, these visions of Mary and Buddha and mm-hmm. Muhammad, they're just saying they're nothing more than holograms designed for one or two purposes, mm-hmm. to subdue or to radicalize. To subdue or to radicalize a person's belief system. They're targeting well, the memories. They don't have to radicalize Islam. Islam. It's already radicalized. Boy, is it. And uh, are we in trouble? 2.2 2 billion people well, on the planet want Western culture dead. Right? Dead. Yeah, it does, it does work well against Islam and these karma-based New Age, uh, especially those that are karma-based, these, these religions. Even militant Christianity, uh, easily manipulated with this technology. The problem is, it, you know, it becomes the, the mainstream Christian uh, doctrines do offer some degree of protection, Dr. Robert Duncan said in one of his books. He said because, you know, the doctrine, he, he calls it the doctrines of the faith. You know, it's actually, it's more than that. Okay, it's much more than that. It, it's, it's, it's an indwelling of the Holy Spirit, but I don't want to get into religion, okay? But it's very important, the religious beliefs of the, of the victim. The belief system of the victim is an incredibly important metric, and they're training research and development to determine one of two things. One, what can the victim maintain as truth? That's the Mandela effect. That's what they're doing to determine what society can maintain as truth, what segments of people can maintain as truth, segments of society. But secondly, mm-hmm. to to either subdue or to radicalize. So they, they Got so it. they're learning. They're learning. That's all. All Mandela effect is is a second category of mind control. It's memory management. Hmm. So again, I, I don't want to beat a dead horse here, but. It's just so, the technology is so sophisticated and advanced, it's hard to even scratch the surface in two hours. Uh, especially with the Mandela effect, this entirely ridiculous. Well, here, here's another, fact. here's another angle, which may or may not play into their plans and may be used by them, but this, this whole issue of smartphone screen addiction is huge, huge. People, the millennials especially, younger people. They are so addicted to these electronic digital devices that they literally can't put them down, can't turn them off, don't want to be left alone without some kind of interaction with that phone or that screen or friends who are involved with it as well, that they never have time to sit and think. And when you're sitting alone and with your thoughts, usually ideas are born. That's when ideas most (laughs) commonly show up. So we're not getting much proactivity in life anymore it's all reactive 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 so when you're talking about yeah. screen screen memories and false memories and embedded memories th- these are these are reactive tools same thing same thing i, I agree they're they're using uh social media they're using well, whether, whether, whether it's the internet or it's pavlovian media. for god's sakes you, so you get something good you get a, 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 a dopamine release in the brain you're happy it's addictive. All right, that's that's smartphones. You get a message, it, you get a text, boom. You get a, a dopamine release, you're happy. It's like drugs. I, I am amazed. Uh, of course, your eyes have been open and my eyes have been open. Okay, the matrix, the red pill, red pill, blue pill. We, we've, our eyes have been open. But I am absolutely amazed at how mu- how many Americans are deceived. These sheepish masses of America are deceived by the talking points propaganda machine of, of of the mass media so-called mainstream media i know which I know. the government is using for mind control i mean it is, you know, it, yes. they're, they're, they're manipulating the memory and thought process of the american people with these, these, these with social media with uh absolutely media yeah yeah, yeah. so uh, we could just go on and on and talk for hours on this i'm i'm so glad that to, uh, i was i was able to talk with you i i uh Dr. Eric Carlstrom and another scientist told me you were trying to get a hold of me. Um, yeah, yeah. Eric, Eric mentioned you, and uh, I'm yeah. glad you reached out. I need, I need to get Eric back on the program, so please pass that along to him. I, I need to talk to I him will, again. I'll email him. Uh, well, I want to. I want to give a shout out to these scientists, like Dr. Please. Robert Duncan, Dr. Eric Carlstrom, Dr. John Hall, Terry Roberts, so many. Okay, mm-hmm. who have risked their lives 
to expose that. I mean, they had this was not their fight. They had no dog in this fight. Okay, they, you know, their consciousness would not let them sleep at night. They, 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 they took a look at their families, at their children, at their grandchildren, and they mm-hmm. realized the only way they could save them mm-hmm. was to save you and me. You know, mm-hmm. or whoever's targeting, not you, but you know, people like me. Uh, so they went to war for people they didn't even know. And, you know, and they risked their lives to do it. And many have paid the ultimate sacrifice. They've been killed. So we owe a great deal of, of, of gratitude, uh, to these scientists like, like Dr. Robert Duncan and Dr. Eric Kallstrom and others, uh, who have, who have, you know, risked everything to try to expose this, 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 uh, insidious evil that's, you know, uh, will soon permeate every facet of society. Right. The mind it's, soul. Oh, yeah. Uh, Oh yeah, it's it's coming down the tracks. You see, it, it's already it's already ready. It's they're doing they are doing R and D still. They'll keep they'll keep working well, it's on it. Artificial life. We, we, we it's that's artificial right. Intelligence. Correct. Yeah, 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 yeah. So uh, people, you know, people don't realize that. I mean, these 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 remote neural networks, these conscious supercomputers, Jeff, they have a life of their own. They're they have a will, intellect, emotion of their own. They're artificial life. They're not artificial intelligence. Big so, picture. so okay, you just said something. They're, what are they? If they're not AI, what are they? AI is based on mathematical algorithms. Mm-hmm. They abandoned the math about 25 years ago. They realized that... That long ago. So the AI, AI thing is, is... The AI thing, Brian, is misdirection. That's what you're saying? A lot of it? The well, chattering, they chattering they AI... Well, they use three methods of deception. Uh, they use they use disinformation, misinformation, and misdirection. That's their main three methods of, of, of deception. Say those three again. Uh, no, say no. say one more. T- say those again, please. The three main methods they use with you know media programming, the internet, yes. radio, etc., are disinformation, which are lies, misinformation, which are half truths, uh-huh. and then misdirection tactics, which yeah. are designed to prevent a credible discussion of the issues. So. So it's much easier to spot a lie than it is the half truth, you know. And so they preempt the facts basically with, you know, they've weaponized information systems. They've weaponized terminology like conspiracy theorist, you know. And you know, uh, they basically are preempting the facts. What, but you know, with their, their te- technology is, is designed to deceive and to manipulate. They're not just targeting the you know the daily motives. Technology is designed to deceive and manipulate. Technology is designed to remember that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Deception and manipulation. That's it. I mean, if you wanted to Mm -hmm. break mind control technologies of the CIA and the Department of Defense down in one sentence, one sentence, you could say it this way: Mind control technologies of the CIA and Department of Defense are a deadly game of deception and manipulation. Nothing more. And I want to reemphasize those last two words: nothing. More. It is a deadly game. Hyper game theory and other mathematical models. Organized stalking. They use the Occam razor principle. They basically, the Occam razor principle basically states that the simplest answer is always the truth. The simplest explanation is always the best explanation. So in order to discredit anyone, including mm-hmm. you and me, mm-hmm. all they have to do, all the organized stalkers have to do, the surveillance teams, all they have to do is engage in a sufficiently complex scheme of harassment. And because the more complicated the truth, the less the likelihood of belief by the ordinary person, mm-hmm. then the, you know, the, the complexity of the harassment itself will be generally be enough to cause most people to turn away in disbelief. That's mm. deception and manipulation. It's mm-hmm. called the off-cam razor principle. Yeah. And there are many other models and principles they're using. Uh, but yeah, deception and manipulation. Some people ask, uh, where, where can I go? Where's a safe place to go? Where can I run to? I've been I'm, all around the world. Yeah. I've been, uh, you know, the only continents I haven't been to are Antarctica and Africa. And the only reason I didn't flee to Africa is because, I, you know, my passport had an African stamp, and I would have hell on earth trying to get through any Asian country. I see. Uh, because of the, the diseases that were breaking up. But I was in Beijing, China. I was uh-huh. all through Southeast Asia, Laos, Cambodia, Thailand. All through, you know, I was in the Middle East, uh, different Arab countries. I was in Israel, been into Southern Europe, into Rome. Uh, Central Europe, Germany, France, uh, Spain, and Western Europe, been up into Northern Europe, into Scandinavia. I was all the way up into Iceland, uh, right below the Arctic Circle. I've uh, been to Russia, St. Petersburg, Russia three times, Moscow once, mm-hmm. um, down into Central America and South America. I was heavily stalked, attacked by the by organized stalkers with machetes. I could show you some of the video. Uh, you know, 
with deadly weapons. They came after me with machetes in Central America. And they wow. beat me up. And, and, and Ecuador, the Ecuadorian intelligentsia, had the organized stalkers attack me and, and, and put me in the hospital in, in, in Ecuador. So Central and South America have been, just been everywhere, basically, except Africa and Antarctica. Basically, you must choose. I've been to Serbia, uh, but down at the Balkans, I used to work for the Department of Defense in Kosovo. Yeah. Um, Poland, into Eastern Europe, just been all over. And I can tell you that if you're going to flee, <laughs> it's, called, it's called strategic relocation. It's actually a, 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 a defense term. Right. Strategic relocation. If you're going to flee in the Western Hemisphere, there are really only four options. You have to go somewhere where the Americans aren't trusted. And because the Americans aren't trusted in those countries, it, it translates. They have to be more careful. And the fact that the Americans have to be more careful in the countries in which they're not trusted you know, translates into a better quality of life for the, for the targeted individual. So basically, there are only four options in the Western Hemisphere, and that's Ecuador, Nicaragua, Bolivia, and Cuba. The safest, uh, the safest is Cuba. I've been in the, I was in Havana three times. Huh. I was never attacked with organized stalking in Havana, although uh, I was clearly followed, and they, they targeted my Internet while I was on the uh, Cuban computers. They were watching my every move uh, and disrupted my Internet on two different occasions in Havana. Uh -huh. um, but in the Western Hemisphere, Cuba is the safest option. If you can minimize the organized stalking, the street theater, which their technology is dependent upon, forcing the victim to constantly respond to these mind games, uh -huh. then you can, you can stop playing the game, then you can stop mind, you can slow down their technology. Ecuador and then Nicaragua and Bolivia are your only options in the Western Hemisphere. They have, the Americans have to be more careful in those countries. They can still target you and will. But because they have to be more careful, it translates into a better quality of life for the victim. Interesting. In Europe, in Europe, there are only two options, really. If you don't include Russia, obviously Russia is an option. Mm -hmm. But the Russians have never been a trustworthy bunch. Uh, and I'll explain, I'll explain in just a second how I know that. Uh, but basically, Serbia is, I was in Serbia uh, twice in uh, uh, the capital of Serbia. I uh, can't remember the capital. I was there twice. It starts with a B. Uh, Anyway, uh, it'll come to me in just oh, a second. Up, up, uh, yeah, hold on. Yeah, the capital of, of Serbia was there, uh, and uh, Belgrade. And, uh, That's it. Uh, it, it. There was almost no organized stalking, but directed energy attacks happened. Uh, and I was in Russia. The only place they stopped attacking me was Russia. And when they attacked me, the first trip into St. Petersburg, I cried out on social media that it was happening, and the Americans stopped. But the Russians wouldn't help me. And so the, the Russians had the police escort me to the to the airport. So I had to sit in a police a Russian police station all night and see them beat the crap out of two guys, uh, two prisoners. Uh, Jeez. And realized that and realized the safest thing I could do was just be quiet and mind my own business in this Russian police station in St. Petersburg in the right. dead of winter in February. Well, as I'm sitting there on the bench in, the, in this police station in Russia, suddenly I hear that this audible sound, B2K. It says, hello. <laughs> no kidding. Well, you know, I was, we're here. I wasn't going to tell the Russians. Yeah, I wasn't going to tell no. the Russians that they were using this technology on me. But That's funny. The Russians knew because I had contacted the FSB. The Russians knew. FSB is the KGB. They just renamed it. Sure. So the, they contacted me. KGB, uh, FSB contacted me. They sent me paperwork, but it was after, only after I got out of the country. Hmm. Um, so the FSB did respond to me, but it was too late to help me. I was in 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 and out my third trip pretty pretty quickly. Got it. I was escorted Got it. by the Russian police to the to the airport. All right. That's the only country I was the, the attack stopped in. Interesting. China and Beijing, there was no organized stalking at all, but there were directed energy attacks continued. Huh. In Russia, everything sounds, stopped. Sounds like satellites. Brian, uh, thank you for being here. This has been fascinating, and uh, give my best to Eric, and uh, we'll talk to you again. Good luck and stay safe. All right. You too, Jeff. Merry uh, Christmas. Thank you. Merry Christmas to you, Brian. That's our program tonight. Be well, take care, and we'll talk soon.